Hey you guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today we are talking about how to catch bass when it's hot. And I'm talking really hot. We're talking those 90 degree days, 100 degree days, even hotter than that. You can still go out there and catch these fish. In fact, you can actually catch some really good ones under these conditions. Come along. Today is one of those hot days. It's 10.30 in the morning right now. It's already low 80s and we are headed up. It's going to be a hot one. Now this afternoon, we're expecting some heavy wind to come in. I'm expecting 15 mile an hour wind, which will bring three to four foot rollers down the lake because it cools down here in the evenings. So we've got to get out here catch these fish in the heat of the day and get back out before we start getting torn up by the waves. It's going to be a handful today. But here's the situation. When it gets miserable hot, you know what I'm talking about, dog days of summer, you can catch these fish. The trick is to focus on shadows. Now, I'm not just talking about the shadows that you're thinking. There are a lot of different shadows. Some of them are probably something you have not thought about yet. So we're gonna run through some different scenarios today. But essentially, it all focuses around shadows. Now, on a 100 degree day, perfect scenario, you just get up at four in the morning and go fishing. You catch them early and you head for home. The problem is we don't all live in that world. Some of us only get one shot. You might have an hour or two hours and it might be in the middle of the day. So we're going out here. I've got six rods with me. We've got a frog, a punch setup, a jig over here. We've got a deep crank, a shaky head, and a Senko. What we're going to do is, like I said, we're gonna run different scenarios. I've got six baits. We're gonna try and catch fish on at least four of them. And I'm going to show you some of the shadows you expect, as well as some that you may have never thought of so that you can be consistent in the summer. Now your most obvious shadows are going to come in the form of cover, hard cover, weeds, and docks. Those are your most common shadows. Those are the places that people know to fish. So a place like this where we have a wall of tules or reeds, right down there at the bottom edge, you're going to have a dark edge. Those fish, as it gets hot, will get right in that dark edge. Little bonus tip for you about tule specifically. They have a root ball and when they grow, they pull up a little bit and it actually leaves a little depression right at the base of the tulies. That's why you catch so many fish right up tight against them. The next place, of course, is going to be grass out in the open water. I don't know if you can see this grass. We've got a bit of an algae bloom going, but there's scattered grass out here that mats up on the surface or just below the surface. And then again, the third one is docks, which I don't need to show you a dock. You know exactly what a shadow under a dock looks like. As this, the temps are getting up, we're still here in the 80s right now, but it's going up. We're gonna start out shallow, see if maybe we can flip one or frog one, get one of those out of the way. Then we're going to head down to some deeper water, talk about some of the more technical ways to get these fish. We have been plagued with technical difficulties lately. I don't know what it is, but we lost audio again today. So a handful of these clips have got no audio, but I'll try to explain to you what happened here. This bass was sitting in the perfect position. As I'm going along flipping, I'm using a one ounce weight and a rage craw, and I'm targeting grass clumps. Now there's a field of grass out there in front of me and I'm not making random casts. If it were earlier in the day, you could be casting anywhere trying to catch these fish. But this time of day, sun up high, hot conditions, the fish pull to the darkest shadows. So as you look out across the grass, there's only two or three spots where the grass has clumped up more than everywhere else. 
that's where this fish was sitting in one of those clumps. The fact that it was a small fish tells me that there probably isn't a big fish on this spot because the best fish would be sitting in the prime location. In this clip, I spot a perfect scenario. As I'm frogging the tulies, I look over to the side and I see a patch of primrose. Now primrose is a vine. It's a leafy vine and it gets extremely thick and it will float on the surface. So what this is, is a small patch of primrose that creates an actual blanket of overhead cover with a full shadow underneath it. Not a partial shadow where there are some tulies that have darkened it, but an actual shadow in the middle of the tule patch. I drop the frog, pick up the flipping stick, fire in there, and get bit immediately. Now I end up losing the fish, which is a shame because it was a two and a half to three pounder. It was a really nice fish, but it goes to show how much you can dial in these fish. That fish was sitting under the only black shadow on that entire shoreline. You look down the bank, you see one patch of primrose, you flip to the one patch, there's your fish. It's not a guessing game. You're not out there going all the way down the bank trying to find fish. All you're searching for is the right scenario where you already know the fish will be. Now this is where things start getting fun. These fish start cooperating with the frog. Right here, I've spotted a little opening in the tulies that goes back farther than all the rest. I fire that frog back there in the back into a little shadow and this fish massacres the frog. I wish we had audio so you guys could hear how hard she hit that bait. This is the little Kayara frog, the little jackal. That fish absolutely killed it. So the scenario here, this fish was sitting in an incredibly predictable location. Like I said, it was a little spot that dipped back farther than the rest. The reason that's important is because it's hot out here. I'm not going to act like I'm not uncomfortable. I'm not going to act like it's not a little bit miserable out here. If you come out summer fishing, it's hot, it's uncomfortable, it can really get to you, but it's getting to the fish too. And for that reason, they draw back in these shadows. This fish had sucked all the way back in this pocket into a little tiny shadow deeper than the rest and was so predictable anyone could have caught her. That's what makes this summertime fishing so special. Let's go a little bit farther, see if we can catch a couple more frogfish, and then we're going to head down to the other end of the lake and get on some of the deeper stuff. It breaks my heart that this clip has no audio because I am about to call my shot. I was getting ready to leave when I noticed this tree was casting a shadow out over two little openings in the tulies. So two little pockets had perfect shadow lines on them. I turn to the camera and I start to explain to you that those two shadows are the one place on this entire shoreline that's going to hold a fish. I don't know if they're going to be good fish, but if there's any fish anywhere on this bank, they're going to be right there. I fire into the first one, get bit, and miss it. Reel up, fire into the second one, and stick a really nice frogfish. Again, I'm throwing that Jackal Kaara. It's the bluegill color. The water is cleaner than normal for this lake, so I'm throwing that smaller natural profile and it's working like a charm. But these two little dark shadows were the only shadow on this entire shoreline. Everything else is the same, it's just reeds. But right there were two perfect black spots. The bass were exactly where they should be positioned on a hot summer day. Now before we leave this spot and head down to the other end of the lake and start fishing deep water, I decide I need to make one more cast deeper into the shadow. After all, if there's going to be a big one, it's going to be 
the farthest back in the darkest shadow. That's how these fish operate. The big fish take the best spots. So I fire that frog back in there and here comes a giant. This is a big summertime bass and she massacred that frog. These are the fish that brings us out in the heat. This is why I'm willing to be out here when it's uncomfortable. This is why you should be out here while it's uncomfortable. These fish are here and they're predictable. This fish was not hard to catch. Anyone could catch it if you understand the pattern and you go out in the heat and you look for those shadows. Anybody could have caught this fish. I've lost track of how many times this summer Tim and I have explained that split where half the bass go shallow, half the bass go deep. You guys know that. So what we just wrapped up is the bass up shallow, the fish around cover. We've got that done. Now we're headed down to deeper water. In deeper water, there are typically going to be three places that I'm looking for these fish on these hot, hot days. And can you believe it? We've driven like five miles and now all of a sudden we've got chop on the water, wind's starting to blow. That's Clear Lake for you. It completely flips just on a switch. So these fish in a little bit deeper water, three places you're going to look. One is going to be docks. Shadows of docks are an excellent place to be searching for these fish, especially docks that extend out over deep water where the fish can choose where they want to be in the depth range. Second is going to be bluff walls. Not every lake has bluffs, but some do. If your lake has bluff walls, meaning big cliff walls, obviously those are going to cast great shadows. Your west facing walls have terrific shadows on them in the morning. Your east facing walls have terrific shadows on them in the evening. But if you want to get more technical than that, you get on the wrong wall at the wrong time of day, meaning the morning, an east facing wall is taking a direct beating from the sun. Well, if you put some time in, if it's your home lake and you put time into that wall and you figure out where the one or two or three rocks are that have an outcropping that creates a shadow down there, you'll notice that your bites become predictable. You're catching them in the same places all the time. Well, it's just like what we just did there in that last shadow. Those fish, even in deep water, but continue to use that single shadow day after day after day after day. So you show up there at the right time of day where the entire wall is shadowed, you have to fish it all. You show up there where just a little piece down there has a shadow on it, you know exactly where your fish are and you can pluck them off. Now the third place, and that's what we're primarily going to focus on right now, is simply deeper water. Now, as you get into deeper water, you have light penetration, meaning the light is shining down on the water and it penetrates into a certain depth. The depth that it shines varies with water color. So if your lake is murky, this might be five to eight feet of water. If your lake is fairly clear, it could be 12 to 18 feet of water. And if your lake is crystal clear, you might be down there 30 or 40 feet. But what happens if you've ever done any diving, you know that as you head deep, it gets black you get away from the light. The light can only come in so far. So we're all concerned about going up and fishing docks, but in all reality, on this lake, if you back out to about 12 to 15 feet of water, all of a sudden you've gotten out of that bright sunlight, it's darker down there, and the fish gather right on that darker line. You find a magical depth, that's why they're there. They're gathering where that light penetration ends. It's a giant shadow that runs the whole rim of the lake. And then after that, you're looking for the sweet spots. And that's what we're about to go do. The sweet spots, as we've already talked about, are going to be corners that have current coming around them, rock outcrops, humps, that sort of thing. So we're gonna focus in on the jig, senko, crankbait, and the, and the shaky head. See if we can get another fish or two and we'll head on in. This is a really deep corner. We're in 38 feet of water with current coming around, but it pops up really quickly. Fish can choose their depth there on the ledge. Throwing a half ounce pitch and jig, the beaver trailer 
just hopping down the slope. Not the biggest bass in the lake, but absolutely on pattern. He ate that jig coming down that break line. really is amazing how you can pattern these fish and get ahead of them. That one, exactly 12 feet of water. That's that T-Mac in June bug on a shaky head. Nice fish sitting right on that edge, right where he should have been. We've already caught fish on four of the baits we tied on, but I think we'll fish a little bit more just because this is fun. That crankbait's working. Feels like a good one. Yeah, buddy. Man, this summer fishing is so much fun. The fish are predictable. That one came on a Striking 6XD uh, Chartreuse Sexy Shad. I went with that because it's a bold, bold color. It stands out in the water. They can find it quickly. Uh, and it runs at a depth that perfectly matches the light penetration right now and where these fish should be stacking up down in that darker water. It's not complicated, guys. You can get out here, you can catch these fish. It works all over the country. You can do this all summer long. I hope you take the time to get out there and just have a blast. We'll link all the gear we use down in the video description. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends, and we'll talk to you soon.